Boys and girls, Tyler Mahoney here at Truman Lake Fishing Intel. My good buddy Chris Brook, who you've seen on the Endless Season Outdoors podcast, you've seen him on Truman Lake Fishing Intel. He's a Truman Lake fisheries biologist. And we are here today pulling out, well here, I'll just let you tell him, Chris. We were removing the otoliths from crappie, uh, and we can age the crappie like that, which I think we'll be showing you later in the video a little more about that process. But this is just the beginning. We'll we fillet the fish and, and take the information it's a female white crappie you can see the bars there 10.6 inches so for those watching he's taking the measurements male or female white crappie black cop, crappie if it's a hybrid and then as far as the otolith goes a lot of people don't even know what that is so how would you describe an otolith what is it well it's it's basically they're kind of like their ear bone and uh, we'll just show you where it's at so I start by disconnecting the gills and then kind of right where the gills meets the back of the head the back of the mouth there pull that apart and there's kind of a capsule right there and it'll be in that capsule just take some wire cutters and that one did really well. You can see them both sticking out. Yeah, let me get a close up before you start digging in. Look. And then that's the otolus right there. And we'll put them number 25. Put them in a vial. Move on to the next fish. Here's another white crappie. Obviously a female, you can see all the eggs in there. 13.5. Same thing. Cut the gills. Pull that apart at the back where the gills meet the back of the head. Capsules right there. Hit that one about perfect too. Number 26. Now these otoliths, I mean it's it looks like a flat, kind of like a tiny flat clam almost. They've got rings on them like a tree. And so they will count the rings and you get the approximate number of years. 10.3 inches. You can <clears throat> see that it's a male, that's what that part right there is the male parts. Do all fish have otoliths? For the most part, but they don't all look the same. So this is kind of informal what we're doing here at the boat ramp pulling these. We'll be back at the Missouri Department of Conservation office looking at these otoliths under a microscope and you'll get to see that. So it's gonna be really interesting. We did catch a hybrid crappie today. Hybrid crappie today. Typically those hybrids get big faster. So it'll be really interesting to see that age compared to the regular black crappie and the regular white black crappie that female. we caught. Chris works very closely with a lot of the Truman Lake guides to gather very important data. And uh, so like today we were out with Richard Bowling and let Chris know and he ran down here to pick up these otoliths out of the fish that we caught. This is the hybrid crappie. It's a big female. Fourteen point six. So once we pulled all the otoliths and we've got 30 here, I'll put a little bit of it's a mix of glycerin and ethanol. It's three parts glycerin, two parts ethanol. And all this does is it makes the rings show up better when you put them under the microscope. So I just dab just enough to cover them up. We'll wait and let them sit for a week or two and then they'll show up a lot better. So we've kind of deconstructed them at this point, but there's your difference between your black and your white and your hybrid, which I got better pictures of. But you can see the real good barring there on the white, everything being speckled on the black and then it's kind of a mix in between not real defined bars and then you can also count the dorsal spines so this one has one two three four five six so, yeah it looks 
like six. And that would, now there's a short one right there in front. So seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven dorsal spines, which would key it to a black crappie, but you can clearly see the bars on here and the body shape really didn't quite look like a black either. Whereas on this white, it should be, now we'll see what it does, but it should be less. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And the blacks have seven to eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven on that one. So that's one of the technical differences if you get down to it, but you can tell the blacks and whites apart just from the coloration. Chris, do you want to just kind of give a quick 20 second what we're doing on how we're aging these fish? Mm -hmm. So we've already pulled the otolith out of the fish and we put those in vials and they're in here and we're gonna pull them out. They've been uh, soaking in a mixture of glycerin and ethanol which helps the annuli stand out so you can see them better. And we're about to put them under the microscope and we've got a camera on the top of the microscope that helps us we can display it on the computer and see exactly what it looks like. And we'll show you an up close shot of that here shortly. And basically it's like the rings of a tree are present on these otoliths and it's how you can determine the age of a fish. And how do you use that information? Why is that important to know the age of the fish? How does it help you in your management? So it's important for you know, setting regulations, especially if you're gonna do a minimum length limit mm -hmm. or something like that. Uh, you know, a lot of people ask me, you know, why don't we go to a 10 inch minimum length limit and and i'm not going to say that i'm not that's a complicated question <laughs> but to answer that question you have to know how fast the fish are growing right um you know we have fish in the you know big tebow part of the lake that are getting four five six years old and they're not even hitting nine or ten inches mm -hmm. so you don't want to set a regulation that's higher than what those fish are ever going to get to sure but then fish also tend to have asymptotic growth where they'll grow faster and then it'll slow down as they get older quite substantially. A fish may at the end of their first summer be three and a half inches long is probably pretty standard for mm -hmm. crappie by the end of on, on Truman. By the end of the second summer they may be in that seven and a half to eight inch range and by the end of the third summer maybe in that nine to ten inch range. Um, what you're seeing you know that's Four and a, four inch, three or four inches the first year, mm -hmm. and maybe three or four inches the second year, but then it's going to be a couple inches after that, and it's going to slow down. And by those, by the time those fish get five, six, seven, eight years old, they're just, they're not going. You know, they don't grow three inches every summer forever. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that slows down. So we want to know, you know, for setting a minimum length limit, where are we on that curve? Mm -hmm. Are we catch? Are those fish not reaching bigger sizes because they're getting caught out? Or are they not reaching bigger sizes because they're not growing fast enough? If they're not growing fast enough, then a minimum length limit won't help you because right. you're just going to have, you know, more fish that can never be caught. But if it's because they're getting caught out so fast, then then that be, would be when yeah. you want to raise your minimum length. Okay. Well, let's take a peek here. We're going to show you a shot of the screen that we're looking at. We'll give you a close-up of this whole contraption here in the microscope, and you'll kind of get to see the science of this whole process. It's pretty neat. So this one's a 12.2-inch white crappie. And pull the other out. And then I got to dry that off because the glycerin and ethanol when it mixes what we'll do is put it in mineral oil when it mixes with the mineral oil it just gets a little more bubbly so the drier you can get get it the less bubbles you'll start accumulating in your oil the magnification a little bit there's a number of different adjustments on this microscope just from what the camera's reading plus just the lighting that I'm shining up through it. So right now I'm just a, I'm just adjusting the actual light that's coming up. There's a mirror underneath this that I can rotate around and adjust how that light shines on them. There's a little practice that comes into play here with seeing enough of them. But this would be the first annuli, the second annuli, the third annuli, and then we had these fish, we collected them April 11th, so 
you know that the outside is going to be the last annuli, so this is going to be a four-year-old crappie, almost, April 11th. He probably didn't quite make it to four years old. but And you can also see the distance between the annuli loosely correlates with the amount of growth the fish is putting on each year. You'll see these first couple annuli, there's quite a bit of growth in there, and then they're slowing down and not as much on the outside. In 2019, when we had that big flood year, you can actually see in some of the fish where those annuli are getting closer together, and then we had that flood year, and it was a wider gap uh, between the 2019 and the 2020 annuli because of the better growth. And now that photograph will be saved on, on my computer, and if we need to go back and look through it, or I'll go back and age 20 or 30 or 100 otoliths all at once in a not that long once I get all the photographs taken. So how many fish, how many crappie will you age, do you think, in a given year? Oh, that's a, that's a tough question, but uh, a, a few hundred anyway. I try to get quite a few just from anglers alone, and then I'll supplement the data a little bit, especially uh, some smaller fish, those seven or eight inch fish, we'll get some of those out of our trap nets to make sure we know, know how fast those are growing. What do you think your favorite part of the job is, being the Truman Lake Fisheries Management Biologist? Is it here in the shop, really putting the science together? Is it out in the field, on the water, doing the trap nets? Mm -hmm. what, what, do you, what, do you, what would you say is one of your favorite parts of the job? I really enjoy bringing everything together, uh, which can be a long process, but I mean, Everybody enjoys getting out of the water too, so it's it's hard to say. You know, I don't want to say I don't get. You know, I definitely enjoy a lot of different aspects of my job between getting out of the water, out on the water, uh, aging fish. I enjoy this, although it can it can be it can become a tedious process of you know you look through you know tens or hundreds of otoliths to to get a few interesting ones like this one here's the three-year-old fish, which isn't that surprising, you know, because we took it in 2022 and we had a big spawning class in 2019. So, you know, half the fish we're aging right now are gonna be 2019 fish. Um, so that part can get a little tedious when when you're just going through fish after fish or otolith after otolith, it's the, the same age. Um, but it is fun when you come across one that's odd or different or older. Um, it's always interesting to see that and then bringing it all together and understanding how that could affect the fishery, um, how that could affect the anglers or how you might be able to change regulation or you know what possibilities are out there and um, just thinking through all the different possibilities and uh, trying to tie that back with what people want to get out of the fishery. You said you do a few hundred a year, maybe more. Um, do you have a goal in mind as far as where you want the otoliths to come from? Uh, you, I know you're kind of at the mercy of anglers, but are you like, hey, you know, I want to get X amount from the Grand Arm, X amount from the Tebow, Osage, etc. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there's there's a few different things I look at. I do try to make sure that we spread our effort around enough to get ages from across the lake and across the different areas because the growth is uh, different depending on where you are in the lake. Um, varies from arm to arm and it varies as you move up and down the arms. So we definitely um, want to get some ages from everywhere across the lake that we can for sure. Now you did sink a bunch more brush piles recently, correct? I did. Uh, we did that in beginning of April it seems like. Mm -hmm. Time flies. <laughs> yeah. How many new fish attractors do you guys try to put in every year? I... It's really, in some ways, it's just what I end up deciding to do. Um, and we'll kind of base it on how many pallets of center blocks we'll put out. Um, I think we've shot for about 25 trees 25 well 25 different locations which may include a, a couple of trees the last few years um, this year we opted to sink a lot of trees in a small area so that's a little bit different than what we've done in years past so I don't remember how many trees we sunk I think it was somewhere in the 
25, 30, maybe 40 trees or something like that. And these are and cedars? Cedar trees, mainly in a, in a couple locations. And they can find that online on those locations? Yes, that information is available online. Nice. What Truman Lake secret spots have you learned since doing this, Chris? Secret spots? Secret spots. It wouldn't be secrets we, if I told them to you. We want to know. We want to know the secret <laughs> spots. Oh. I don't know that there's necessarily any secret spots, but it is interesting to go around all the different parts of the lake and, um, you know, see there's some big crappie up on the upper Osage, but it's also... I don't know that that's a secret, but it's also hard to access. And if it gets, yeah, if it starts to get really low up around Osceola, you can't really put a boat in up there. And then getting around and getting into those creeks just gets to be a mess. So it's interesting to see that, but it's also I don't know if that's a secret. And I think the Palmy Arm, from my data, probably seems to be the area where we catch good numbers and good size of crappie that doesn't get talked about a lot but there's also people that there's people watching this video right now that are disappointed that i said that <laughs> and there's um there's a lot of people that do know that that's a good area over there and i think it, i mean it makes sense because you know so many people coming from kansas city area or something like that that's the farthest part of the lake to get to if you're traveling down from the city so um it makes sense that it's not hit quite as hard over there. This is a 13 and a half inch white crappie. And it looks like it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. I always count it a number of times try to come up with the same count in multiple locations. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, six. I feel like I said seven one time, but I don't know how I got to seven now. Yeah. It looks like six to me. Um, and if I'm in doubt, so we can take, this is the whole otolith. So this is the entire thing right there. And we can, it's got some mineral on it. We can take that and take a thin section right out of the middle of it and put it on a microscope slide and we can show you how we do that too. And that is, I would I'd almost say more accurate, but for the small fish or a lot of them, like I don't really have any doubt that that's a six year old fish, but you can kind of clear it, you can kind of confirm that if you section it and it's clear on, on that slide sectioned out like that than it is in a hole. Um, but for most of your small fish, until they start to get bigger, thicker, older lifts with lots of rings that are tight together, you can normally do it pretty good just looking through the whole older lift under the microscope. So we're getting ready to age this hybrid and it's a, a hybrid is a cross between a black and a white crop. In your, in your experience, the hybrid's can get larger quicker. Correct. They tend to grow a lot faster than the blacks or the whites. Well, the whites tend to grow faster than the blacks and the hybrids grow faster than either one. Of course, I broke this otolith, so I have to kind of piece it back together. This one was 14.6 inches and it looks like it's one, two, three, four, a five-year-old fish. So we just we just looked at a couple black crappie that were five years old and 12 and a half inches, and we got the hybrid here is five years old and 14 and a half inches, which you know that goes back. You know we were talking about minimum length limits, you know, and uh, a fish that can get to 14 and a half inch year inches in five years versus one that gets to 12 and a half inches in five years you can see how that would affect where you could set a minimum length limit you know on how that would affect different fish differently or different populations differently with different growth rates so this is a otolith that i collected from a fish at the crappie masters national tournament in 2018 it was a 15 inch fish and 
we aged it at 11 years old, which I think it's gotten a little bit harder to age as it's sat for a while, but it's also a little bit harder to age because it's bigger and it's, it's a lot thicker otolith. If you hold it in your hand, it's, it's obvious that it's thicker than those younger fish, but we have like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then eleven out there. Um, and then this is one that what we do is take a cross section out of that to make sure we got the age right. So this is the otolith. If I'll, I'll grab another one here. So what's on the computer screen is the whole otolith which would be like this, facing like that. And what we can do is take a tiny sliver, a cross section, right through the middle of that. And you can see the lines like that too. So I've got one of those in here. I've already cross sectioned this one. I normally have it on a slide, but I took this one off the slide. Um, and it's right here. Let's see if I can pull that over there. And we can zoom in on that. And as you can see, it makes it look a little bit different, but it also makes it look a lot clearer. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I think there's a little bit. A little bit of goofy stuff going on right through here where it offsets a little bit or a little bit mismatched. But one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm pretty sure it was 11. You can tell for sure that it's 11. I think there's a no, I think there might be a 12th one there, but this is this over with it a little bit mismatched in the way everything flows. And this fifth one kind of jumps around a little bit. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then I think there's an eleventh one out there. And this I could actually I can look through the microscope. Now when I look through the microscope it takes so this takes one of the eyes away from you to use the camera. So if I flip to the microscope, I can't see, you can't see it on the camera. But they do tend to be a little bit clearer if you actually look at them on the scope versus what they are on the computer. So I'll look at this one and see what I think. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And then there's a little bit on the outside of that. So that would be it would have gone through 11 winters and then plus this would have been the last growing season so you could call that we'd either call it 12 uh, meaning that it's through 12 growing seasons or you could call it 11 plus because it's really 11 and a half years old um, for a lot of things in fisheries management we can count by growing seasons and just kind of round up to the nearest year um, once we get into that especially once you get into October or November at the end of the year they're not going to grow much before the next spring. So what I'll do if I'm not sure about the age is I'll take one of these whole otoliths and try to take a thin sliver out of the middle of it. So to start that project process I'll break it in half. So now we have half of an otolith. And I try to get that somewhere close to the annuli and then I'll sand that down. And then what we're going to do is I'll stick this on a microscope slide for the rest of it. So one of the first things I'll do is burn that a little bit. If you burn it until it's kind of a golden brown color, it'll help the annuli stand out better. So we got the otolith on here that we're heating up to burn, roast it a little bit. And then this is Crystal Bond. It softens up when it gets hot and it'll make a little bubble on there and we'll stick the otolith in that. So we're already kind of getting a bubble there. So it's golden brown now and then I can take it off and put it in this what I've already prepared. 
this crystal bond solution. Just kind of stick it down in there. I might warm it up a little bit. So once you have the crystal bond on there and everything, you can just sand it down. We actually have a wheel that we'll use, a grinding wheel, if we're doing a bunch of these. So I've sanded this one off and I'm going to put a touch of mineral oil on it. That helps it stand out. Move it over here where you can see it on the computer. Focus that. And you can see, and it's a little clearer now, first annualized right here. So one, two, three, four, five, and then six would be on the outside. And then we can kind of, we can look at the other side of it too. It looks a little different over there. The, it's just a different section of the overlith. But one, two, three, four, five, and then six on the outside. So that's what they look like after their section. All right, guys. Well, hey, thanks for watching. You got to see the process that Chris uses to extract the otoliths from the crop each and actually got to see the way he ages them. That was really exciting and really appreciate him and the MDC allowing us to come here today and get a up close and personal view of that. It's really helpful information. If you have any questions for Chris uh, for the future, feel free to, to write in. I guess you can write into Truman Lake Fishing Intel and I can get questions over to him or if there's, is there a way to get a hold of you? Yeah, I can give you my business card. And okay put that in as a screenshot or something fantastic so big thanks to chris brook and uh, we appreciate you guys watching like we said if you have any questions feel free to send those in and we'll get those over to chris and get those answered as soon as we can thanks so much for watching we'll catch you on the next one